I'm Tom Malagany for Inside EVs. I'm here at Ford's Dearborn Development Center, about to take a spin in one of these. This is a beautiful blue Ford F-150 Lightning, Ford's upcoming all-electric pickup truck. We're going to take a tour of Ford's new electric vehicle, Rouge Center. We're going to get an in-depth look at the Ford Mega Power Frunk, one of its best features. We're going to take a look at Ford F-150 Lightning charging and then we're also going to take a look at the interior and give a walk around of the vehicle but first click that subscribe button ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the inside evs youtube channel so i had the opportunity to ride for about 20 minutes in an f-150 lightning doing laps around ford's dearborn test track my driver was none other than the global manager of electric vehicles for Ford, Darren Palmer. Palmer and I chatted for a bit before hopping in the F-150 Lightning to do some hot laps. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to drive the Lightning. I don't think anybody outside of Ford except President Biden has actually driven it. I wasn't even allowed to take pictures or video inside the vehicle or any pictures or video of the truck driving on the track. That's because there are other vehicles sharing this test track that the public just hasn't seen yet. Ford even had to inspect my camera before I left to make sure I didn't accidentally record something that I wasn't allowed to. I knew the F-150 Lightning was gonna be powerful, and I'm very accustomed to driving powerful EVs. I've pretty much driven all of them. But even I was impressed by the performance of such a large vehicle. Now, all versions of the F-150 Lightning have 775 pound-feet of torque. Uh, but when it comes to horsepower, it depends on which battery you have. F-150 Lightnings with the standard range battery have 426 horsepower. And those with the extended range battery pack, like the one we were driving in, have 563 horsepower at virtually any speed. Uh, and Palmer took the truck to up over 90 miles an hour while we were on the track. Uh, when he would stomp on the accelerator, we were both thrown back into our seats. Palmer noted that he believes the really cool features uh, that the truck has, like this huge power frunk, the 9.6 kilowatt pro power on board, the intelligent backup power that allows you to power your house in the event of a power outage. Um, all those things are gonna tempt potential customers to take a look at the F-150 Lightning. But the performance, the smoothness, and the driving feel is what's gonna ultimately sell them on it. And that's gonna hook them on electric drive for life. Palmer told me that Ford actually considered doing what he called a sci-fi type wild design obviously going after what Tesla did with the Cybertruck. But he said after a lot of surveys, they concluded that uh, they'd be better off just making a true F-150 that was pure electric. And doing so also allowed Ford to bring the F-150 Lightning to market at a price point that isn't much more than a comparably equipped, conventionally fueled F-150 once you take into consideration the available incentives. And that's because many of the parts used in the Lightning are also used in all F-150s. Uh, for instance, Palmer pointed out the fact that Ford buys 4 million truck seats every year. And that buying power has helped them keep the Lightning's price down. Pricing for the Pro base version will start at $39,974. Now that trim is primarily focused at fleets but I asked Palmer to clarify if it will also be available for individuals to purchase, because that wasn't entirely clear uh, when they first launched the vehicle. Palmer confirmed that right from the Lightning's initial launch, the base pro version will be available for individuals if they want one. However, after doing some research on this topic, I found out that retail customers won't be able to order the Lightning in the pro trim with the optional extended range battery pack. They can only get the Pro with the standard range battery pack that Ford projects will have a 230 mile EPA range rating. Now commercial customers 
can get the optional extended range battery pack on the Pro model also. So clearly Ford is pushing their retail customers into the more expensive trims by eliminating the extended range battery option on the base Pro trim. We then headed over to Ford's Rouge Electric Vehicle Center. This is an all new facility that's still under construction. It's a 500,000 square foot plant that will be dedicated to making the F-150 Lightning. So obviously Ford is planning on making hundreds of thousands of F-150 Lightning. You don't build an entirely new manufacturing plant so you can make a low volume compliance car. The factory is still a few months away from being fully operational, but they have begun to install some of the line robots. And I did catch the actual cab of an F-150 Lightning moving down the line on an autonomous vehicle carrier. There were other F-150 cabs on these carriers, but they weren't Lightning. Ford is using cabs from regular F-150 as placeholders since they don't have many actual F-150 Lightning cabs made just yet. Here you can see a Ford employee controlling the vehicle carrier, but once the plane is open, that's not how it's going to happen. It's going to move autonomously down the line, and it follows a magnetic strip that's embedded in the concrete floor. Now, these electric vehicle carriers also will recharge as they're moving down the line via these chargers that are built into the ground. The carriers also have hydraulic lifts and they lift the vehicle to the exact height that the technician working at each station needs them to be at. The very last stop at the end of the production line is the DC fast charge test. Now walking around the factory I found a few other DC fast chargers here and I was able to verify that these were 350 kilowatt units. Even though the F-150 Lightning doesn't require liquid fuel, it does require some liquids to be pumped into it, and this is where it happens. This station pumps in the washer fluid, the radiator fluid, brake fluid, and also the refrigerant, and it's towards the end of the production line. I then spoke to Nancy Reppenhagen, who's Ford's global feature process supervisor responsible for the mega power frunk. So we're looking at the Mega Power Frunk. It's uh, Mega, it's the biggest frunk in the industry, 400 liters of volume and 400 pounds of payload. So definitely built Ford tough. As you can see, we've got enough room with that volume to carry two sets of golf clubs. Also, you could take, um, as far as luggage, you could put one carry-on or one checked bag and two carry-ons. We'll fit in here and with a little room like this. That is enormous. I also notice it appears that there's a lower section yep, down here. Lower, uh, that's included okay. in the volume. Uh, this lower, we're calling it the cubby. Uh, and there's a drain at the bottom of that. Yep. Is this waterproof? Uh, yeah, so it's a dry space. So if you put something dry in here, you want to keep it dry, it'll stay dry. But if you want to put something wet or dirty, mm -hmm. um, then we've got the ability to do that with the drain and you can easily clean it out. Okay, what's behind? Oh, the there's a panel are, back here. That's Is all, that just a... That's our um, access mm -hmm. to the billable battery, uh, mainly for service. Yeah. We do have uh, power points okay. that you can access here. And how much weight can you fit in here? How much 400 cover? pounds. 400 pounds. And what was the the uh, the overall volume? 400 liters. 400 so liters. 14.1 14.1 cubic feet. This is amazing. What I love most about this, quite honestly, is this front load-in where the grill is part of the hood. Uh, I noticed on the Rivian truck, one of the first things I noticed when they had that reveal was it had this huge, deep uh, frunk. And um, I, I mean, which I thought was great, but then I started wondering, well, how, you know, I've got a bad back, I have two surgeries. How am I gonna pick up something and, and, and lift it over the top and put it in there? With this, it's super easy. It just loads and unloads really easily. Yeah, with the integrated grill, the load height here is about the same as an Expedition lift gate. So super easy, easy for kids, easy for smaller, mm -hmm. you know, smaller people. Um, like you, I'm not going to be able to lift uh, heavy luggage up and over a grill. Mm -hmm. So this is really, um, really makes it easy for everyone to use. I also notice on the side here, there are some power outlets. Yep, we've got Looks like four, right? Yep, four 120 power outlets and two USBs. That's delivering 2.4 kilowatts of power. Right. Which, so enough power to, uh, you can power your lap your laptop at your work site mm -hmm. and still power your work site tools. Yeah, now the overall, the truck can deliver 9.6 kilowatts can, of off-board 
offboard power, but the, the frunk up here has uh, 2.4, yep. uh, which, you know, makes sense because, you know, chances are if you're powering something up here in the front, it might be like a laptop or something. You almost might use this as like a workspace. You're probably not going to be running the big equipment out of here, like big table saws or 240 volt uh, equipment. That's why the 240 volt outlet is in the, bed. Is, is in the back of the bed. Right. There's a total of, I think, 11 power outlets on the on the whole vehicle wow if i mean including the cabin yeah. the bed and the, the front yeah yeah so i mean that, that's just an amazing amount of of power that you can offload from the vehicle um how about lighting i yeah. can see it's uh, i don't see any lights lit right now right, this might be at you. Yep. yeah um, what the integrated grill allowed us to do, we realized that if we put the lights in the front, then mm -hmm. as you add cargo, you're, you end up blocking the light. Mm -hmm. So we were able to put them in the integrated grill. We've got two four bulb LED lights, nice and bright. And because we've got two independent uh, light sources, we're not creating a big dark shadow when we, when we work in the front. Exactly, from either angle. All right, so let me tell you about cargo management. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes with a cargo hook that would connect to, we've got these five grocery hooks up top. And those will be great if you've got grocery bags and you just want to loop the handles over and mm -hmm. keep them from rolling around. We've got a cargo hook that would attach to those. Um, we've got four D-rings on the bottom, so you're able to secure a heavy load if you want. And with that cargo net, um, I love it for like, if you want to put a soccer ball, you know, just something really quick, um, yeah. an iPad or something, really great for that. Um, and then we did something um, with, the, with the lid to make um, storing and carrying things easier. So the lid has uh, got multi-positions. Mm -hmm. And what this will allow us to do, if you could picture you're going to the grocery store, now I can stick groceries here and I can put groceries here. And if I've got groceries that are going to roll around, um, this, the cubby will keep them secure uh, and it keeps them separated and kind of all, you know, it, it divides the space so mm -hmm. we're not moving. It also creates um, a deeper space. So if mm -hmm. you've got taller items, one of the uh, things I like to talk about is um, if you're gardening, you could put your um, potting soil back here. And then you could stand up your plants, like tomato plants or whatever, in here. And it's going to keep them from, from bouncing just, around. Yeah, and you get home yeah. and you just clean them up. And you can even hose it down and the water yep. drains out. Yep, absolutely. That's great. Then we've got a second position. And this one, um, it's nice if, you know, if you're just trying to uh, do a one hit that operation. Mm -hmm. Then you could just pull it forward, pop it in, stays open. I could load with two hands then, get that in. Or we were considering um, if you're tailgating and you want to load that up with ice. And beverages, <laughs> it's easy access. You can have your crock pots back here. And then the, another position, uh, this one I would consider if I want to have wine bottles and I'm rolling around or clinking together. Kind of just divides it. Perfectly in the back, yeah. Space. And then you can use it as an easel. I like where you're going with the wine bottles. <laughs> A lot of people like the wine bottles. So you can use that as an easel with your iPad or your phone. That's cool. Um, and then this is completely reversible. The non-skid mat removes. Mm -hmm. So you could remove that if you if you didn't want it in there, and then you could reverse this as well. And you've got a non-skid surface here. With a, we added a ruler and a trinket tray. And some, and some, cup holders. some cup holders. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. well, that's fantastic. Thanks. So that's it for our Ford F-150 Lightning Mega Power Frunk review. Thank you very much for going over all these features. This is a fantastic uh, feature for the, for the Lightning. I mean, I think this is really what's gonna bring people that aren't, say, electric vehicle enthusiasts into looking at this vehicle. Uh, you know, somebody that's out to get a, a Ford F-150 really doesn't care what it's powered by. They, they don't care, they just want a vehicle that is, you know, can do what they need it to do, can perform the tasks. They're gonna look at this and say, my God, a, a, a frunk or you know they'll be calling it a trunk in a in a pickup truck i never had a pickup truck with a trunk so i still get the full use of the bed and the back seats and i get this awesome cargo area here so you know i don't really don't care what it's powered by this thing just will be able to do what i need it to do absolutely yeah by uh this space here being a dry space gives customers their cabin back you don't have to share your cabin with your groceries anymore excellent well yep. thank thanks a lot and uh Good luck with the F-150 Lightning. Thanks, thanks Tom. The interior of the F-150 Lightning is very similar to the regular F-150 and many components are shared. This is part of what Darren Palmer was explaining to me earlier about how Ford managed to keep the cost of the Lightning 
close to that of a comparably equipped ICE F-150. One really cool feature is how the gear selector folds neatly into the center console, and that allows the armrest to fold out and become this huge flat surface. You could place your laptop to work or even use it as a table when you stop at your favorite fast food restaurant. The Pro and XLT trims come with a 12-inch center touchscreen display. If you upgrade to the Lariat or Platinum trims, you get the same 15.5-inch center display that Ford uses in the Mustang Mach-E. The Lightning will have four distinct driving modes, Normal, Sport, Tow Haul, and Mud and Ruts. The Lightning has an onboard scale system that estimates the weight of the cargo and the passengers. This information will then be used by the intelligent range estimator since the weight of the cargo can have a big effect on the vehicle's driving range. Palmer explained to me that the goal for this range estimator was to always estimate the proper range plus or minus 5%. Ford removed the range estimate from the driver's display. However, in the Pro Power onboard screen, I couldn't help but notice it said 472 miles on a fully charged battery. Now, that's a lot more than the 300 miles that Ford has been telling us the F-150 Lightning with the extended range battery pack will deliver. I did a full article on this for Inside EVs, and I'm going to put a link to that article in the description of this video for those that are interested in reading our thoughts on the topic. The rear seating area is spacious and has a ton of legroom, but I don't think it's really any different from that of a standard F-150. For level two charging, Ford will offer a few options. For those that get the extended range battery pack, Ford has introduced the Charge Station Pro. It's an 80 amp charging station that can deliver up to 19.2 kilowatts. That's paired to match the 19.2 kilowatts that the dual 40 amp onboard chargers that come with the extended range battery pack can accept. The F-150 Lightning that have the standard range battery pack will come with a single 48 amp onboard charger. That can accept up to 11.3 kilowatts, and it's most likely the same onboard charger that Ford uses in the Mustang Mach-E. Those customers may elect to get Ford's 48 amp connected charge station to pair it with what the onboard charger can accept. All Lightning will come standard with a 32 amp Ford Mobile Charger. It's the same charger that comes standard with the Mustang Mach-E, and it's a dual voltage unit. It can either be plugged into a 120 volt outlet or a 240 volt outlet, depending on which adapter you plug into the unit. One of the most interesting features of the F-150 Lightning is its ability to power your home in the event of a power outage. It's like a mobile Tesla power wall with even more energy storage. In fact, you'd need to buy between eight and 10 power walls to have the same amount of energy that will be available in the F-150 Lightning's extended range battery pack. But if you want this bi-directional power flow, you'll need to purchase Ford's 80 amp charge station pro plus a transfer switch and an inverter. Ford has partnered with solar provider Sunrun to supply and install the added equipment. The F-150 Lightning will be able to output 9.6 kilowatt of power through the intelligent backup power function. That's gonna be good to power your home for about three days, according to Ford, and even longer if you use your energy conservatively. Well, that's it for our Ford F-150 Lightning factory tour video. I hope we touched on the topics you wanted us to. Now, this is only the first opportunity we had to spend some time with an F-150 Lightning, but it certainly won't be the last. So leave your comments in the comments section on what you'd like us to concentrate on next. Now, I know we may not have broke any big news on the F-150 Lightning, but that's not because we didn't try. Ford's very tight-lipped at this point, and they're really holding back a lot of information. They're going to release it in the time frame that they set, and we're not going to be able to get anything out of them that they're not willing to reveal at this point. But we'll be on them, and we will report the F-150 Lightning news as it becomes available. That's a wrap. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you like what we're doing here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content. And thanks for watching. Thank you.